deterioration and and it is bad leadership I do hope that uh, God in his mercy will deliver this country from this type of leadership Nigeria needs more than power and good rule Nigeria Nigerians need to live like human beings. Nigeria will no longer be looked at as the giant with clay feet. No, we will be looked at as the true giant. We will move with that frame of a giant and of course do what is right and of course you know be where Nigeria should be and uh, tell the international community that look, the giant has woken up. These are the things that you put together. Now, I told you about the aesthetics. Is that what people will eat? Now, plants are, I mean, boroughs were dug for plants, but where people are living, they don't have water. Then, street lights were powered by generators. The places where people are living are in perpetual darkness. Didn't you see all this? We will require to have a kind of synchronic approach to this fight against corruption. And the impunity that we are talking about, if Mr. President is going to get it and if he's going to make a something about it, he must make sure that everybody, every functionary of government have the same mindset with him. your favorite personalities will are on Ben TV, the first ethnic satellite TV session in the UK. We want to say thank you for your viewing loyalty and compliments of the season. We wish you a very fruitful and successful new year. As we go into this new year, we promise to give you the best content ever from this part of the world, Nigeria and the rest of Africa. Of course, uh, this episode is going to be a bumper one this year. Uh, we're going to be having the former governor of Ogun State, Otubak Benge Daniel, Thanksgiving service, which was held a couple of days back at Shagamu, Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria. We were part of the event, of course, where we saw a lot of choristers from all over Ogun State, Nigeria. It was a big one for the ex governor of Ogun State, Otubak Benge Daniel. We're also going to show you an interview that we did for President Muhammad Isbari designer. This is a guy who actually designs President Muhammad Buhari's uh, election campaign designs and of course uh, he, he, he was the one that actually convinced the president that wearing a suit makes you a real man and he actually did so. Uh, his name is Uche Unaji. He's the owner of Ouch Fashion Outlets in Lagos and he was able to tell us how he got President Muhammad Buhari to wear a suit after 20 years uh, that's quite funny to me but i mean it's real and he was able to tell us the story also we'll be showing you an interview with a kid artist from nigeria one of the great sensation here he's making so much waves in africa his name is ozzy b we call him ozzy bosco uh, he just came back from british got talent that was held in manchester uh, some couple of weeks back and he's still bubbling and making waves there we're going to be showing you what went around with him when he went on the store and what his plans for the future are. Enjoy the show. We'll see you on the other side. Take my shine away, but now me standing tall. 
It was indeed a beautiful day at the annual New Year Thanksgiving and memorial service of His Excellency Otumbagbenga Daniel, the Ashiwaju of Rama Christians and his family. The families of the former governor of Ogun State for several months worked tirelessly and assiduously to put up the well packaged event. <laughs> The event which was held on the 11th of January took place at the Baptist International Worship Center in Shagamu, which was built in honor of the late clergyman, the Most Reverend Adebola Daniel J.P., father of Olubenga Daniel. The annual New Year Thanksgiving and Memorial Service of Otumba Benga Daniel was well attended by dignitaries, prominent church ministers and the choir. The host pastor was Reverend Wale Shulola. Also invited as the guest preacher was Bishop Francis Wale Oke, an apostle, preacher, and founder of Christ Life Church worldwide. During a short sermon by him, he called on the congregation to emulate Christ and adopt his ways. See somebody who is untactful, either untactful to men or untactful to God, then you are seen an evil person. Part of godly Christian virtue is to be thankful. To wake up in the morning and say, Father, I thank you. God, I thank you. Somebody did something for you. Remember to say thank you. One of the highlights of the annual New Year Thanksgiving and memorial service of Otto Magbenga, Daniel and family was when the former governor threw the congregation playing a hymn on the keyboard. There were also soul lifting musical performances by the choir.
academic scholar, disciplinarian, and administrator, Dr. Ayoka Awolo Odusumu was honored and decorated as a patroness of the Christian Association of Nigeria. That it is time for the truth of the gospel to proclaim the same to every generation as long as God grants you the grace of life. And it we put on you in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. For the rest of the Thanksgiving service, it was merriment, bond, and celebrations all the way. Today we'll be speaking to one of Africa's leading style icons who actually still spends a living in New York. He is a philanthropist and he's dynamic in every sense. Well, we quite remember him for that outstanding outfit that we saw on uh, President Buari during the campaign. Well, right now I bring to you the person behind that design in person of Uche Unaji, the founder and creative director of Ouch. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah. It's nice to be here. Yeah, that name, ouch, is <laughs> really unique. How did you come about it? Yeah, we, you know, let me just say that it's interesting every time I'm asked that question, I just, I just go like this. It, it, it was a name that came about from university days. Okay. Um, and um, my friends were just, there, there was this friend that anytime I showed up in, on campus, just looking in my own little way put well put together, he just goes out. Uh, but most but most importantly, we understood that out is an expression. When we wanted to start a company, when it's, we were shopping for names and we wanted something that got across border, um, something that's come out as global because of the vision and mission, which eventually will be to be to the ends of the earth, to be at least in major fashion capitals and malls in the, in the, in the world. We wanted a name that um, anybody can pronounce, and we knew that out um, an 80-year-old Asian can pronounce it just the way a two-years-old American or five-years-old African can pronounce out. Um, and because it's a form of expression, we had to we tied it we tied it with um, style being a form of expression. So that's when we say um, out. You know, quintessentially, you it's your own, it's, it's it's about your own style, your own form of expression, and it's difficult to explain and all that. It looks all <laughs> it's not as difficult as it looks. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm going really just making it look difficult. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all good. Still on links, you are known as the style doctor. Uh, we have the wrong doctor, not the style doctor. Come on, how did you come about? <laughs> uh, it, it was clients that started calling me that. The style doctor. Yeah. Okay. I had a few clients that, um, one of them being a notable um, clergyman who goes about that um, he has several doctors, but in terms of style, I'm his doctor. So we just came up with that name. And then, in, for what I also do, for most of the things that I just um, make clothes and all that, for part of the things I do, which is to help men solve sartorial challenges, it, it, it's solving that challenge is like a doctor helping you to solve health problems. So somebody wants to look their best in the outfits that will best um, project them. That's when they come to a style doctor. But okay. the, the style doctor, I must say, it's not, it's not going to be just about me. It's going to become a movement. 
So, so, so you, doctor, yeah, so you, <laughs> so you see, you see people becoming style doctors very soon. The way you have makeup artists, so they become style doctors. And so that's why I'm in school training, so oh, I can train others. Interesting. Now yeah. you just mentioned school. You really, I heard you. A little yeah. birdie told me yeah. you to go back to school. Can you? Yeah, I, I decided to go back. To, I decided to go back to school after the experience with the um, present president. Right now, I realized that there was need to get formal education in what I wanted to do, and I was shopping. I had to. I, I mean, I wanted the best. That has always been my philosophy, and in anything I do, I try to give the best. So I had to go to FIT to study image consulting, which is a two years program. So I'm, I'm, I do New York and Lagos. So. This spring, I'm going back to school again. Oh. Hopefully, to finish spring summer. Okay. Now, designing an outfit for the president doesn't come easy. It comes with a lot of hard work and energy. And of course, um, this means you might be very expensive, you know, judging by the class of people that you design for. Um, uh, let me start from the last thing you said, which is the cost factor. We are just out there to provide outfits for discerning individuals. Discerning individuals are not really price sensitive as against quality sensitive. The discerning individuals first and foremost take quality fit into cognizance before they consider price. So if we say we pre the out brand is perceived as premium, it does not necessarily equate expensive. We at times so we are affordable luxury and we are affordable in all sense of it. Um, work, working with the president to have the iconic look, I wouldn't say it's the most challenging so far for me, really? but it was pretty much challenging. You look at the president and you look at his structure, having to put him in a suit. <laughs> it, it, it's, he, didn't, he himself didn't even believe it. He didn't believe that he could wear a suit. I remember he, he mentioned to me that he hasn't for almost 20 years, over 20 uh, years, something like, something like that, that he, he hasn't worn a suit and he said he wanted to see the magic I would perform. Okay. You know, when they said, ah, this is the style doctor, he said, let me see the magic I perform. <laughs> and we, we actually stayed to a good 24 hours overnight on this project. Because you, you look, as I said, you look at the structure, you, you, you had to, we had to get the right fit, balance and proportion. If you look at his, his build, you know that he's not off the rack, you just go and pick a suit off the rack for, or even okay. if you're doing bespoke, it had to be done with so much attention to detail. Um, it was ple a pleasant experience, as I said, I mean, the president was a very jovial man he i mean we were already, we were already acting from day one as if we were okay so what was his comment when you were done with designing for him he, he didn't just he didn't just believe um himself when he started he didn't just believe his eyes when he saw when the compliments first started rolling in from the people <laughs> around and his grandson you know his grandson if you look at those images the one that he <laughs> shakes his grandson <laughs> Say, Grand, Grandpa, you look very good. You look good. <laughs> and then he started smiling. <laughs> so it was, um, it was an experience that I'm sure will live with me for a lifetime. All right, so you work with a lot of um, Italian designs. Have you thought about playing with African fabrics and designs also? If you look at, if you look at some of my um, pictures on Instagram, you see me wearing the African print and all. No doubt that I work with um, Italian, European, and those different factories and designers um, but th the truth is there's nothing like home and for me at the stage where i am right now and we're talking about now i so much want to i'm hoping that i will go back to my state anytime soon this yes. year if if the if the governor i mean if the governor is open to you know seeing the possibilities i'm from abia state and i have so much passion for abba okay you know i have so much passion for abba so when i go to when I go to factories around Europe and Asia and see the things they, they do, I remember myself in Abba about nine, eight years ago when I, when I used to make stuff out of Abba and I realized that God has not given me the privilege to go around the world and see the things I've seen in such a short space and hold it onto myself alone. It's not possible. God doesn't do that. So it, it simply means that he has given me those exposures so that we can develop our country even if it's from our my state, Abba, uh, Abia State. 
So that that is, I believe that answers your question. That I'm bored. I'm tired working with the Italians and the Turkish. You just want to explore now. I'm bored. I I'll rather bring them here and take them to our bar. Okay. Let's set up. I wish you success in that. Thank you. <laughs> now, oh, another aspect of you is being a philanthropist. Mm. I mean, that is not something you dab in, into, you know, it's not common here in the country. I mean, what's your drive? Um, this year, I, I started last year already, but this year, my team and myself, we have been able, I've been able to explain to them why I want to do what I want to do. And it still comes from another um, spiritual angle that I don't have most of the things I have now for myself alone. Um, you, people are people are suffering. People are in need. I told them that this year we have to try as much as possible to see if we can include up to ten thousand people for free. And that for free, it's not by them coming to ouch and taking clothes for free. It's it, we're putting the strategies in place whereby I'll probably start going around to beg clothes. Two. I, I myself. We start going around to beg for clothes, to okay. beg people for their clothes from their wardrobe that they've not worn. Then we take the clothes, we go to youth, you, um, to NYC camps for people that need them. We take the clothes, we go to the motherless baby's home. We go, we take the clothes, we go to the um, places where you have youths that don't, you know, the disadvantaged areas that need clothes, to good clothes to wear. That is the burden of in terms of philanthropy or the, I don't know if it's, you call that something I think to me it's like yeah, you still work for humanity it. yeah work for humanity because last year having a lot of people read my wardrobe young men and all that I just look at them they don't fall in, they don't fall into the like demographic this official, yeah. yes apart from that they don't fall into the demographic they are just long throats if I'm allowed to use that local balance they're just having long throats right um, it has nothing to do with any bottle. Um, they just have long throats. So, <laughs> I mean, that, that's what it is. But I really want to take it back. I'm an Ajegule boy. I don't know if, if, that, if that is ever known, but that's what it is. So, this 2016, people will see me going to the streets of Ajegule trying to empower people. Okay, now let me catch you there. You said you're uh, an Ajegule boy. I'm, I'm an Ajegule boy, yeah. <laughs> okay. That means you never had it easy. Can you tell us some of the. Uh, the patches that you went through to get to where you are today. Well, one of the one of the major patches I went through that a lot of people don't know, mostly young people, they don't know, and they look at you now and they think that you're coming, you're one rich child from one rich family or something because you're trying to speak American English or you're trying to look all calm. Is the fact that at the age of 15, I started playing the bass guitar professionally, and when I say professionally, you can't count maybe three or four people. At that time, maybe 15 years backwards or more, that that we're playing musical okay. instrument the way I was playing. As in, at 17, I started playing in joints on the island. So I was transporting when my when my contemporaries were back at home playing football on the streets and all. I was transporting to go and play in joints. When I say joints, bars and all on the island, and there weren't more, much of them. Maybe five or six back then back then you know it, it, it was I was doing this because I wanted to go to a, a particular school so you can see as a teenager I started being focused I, I must say that focus is very key it's because I wanted to school somewhere so I, I needed to save up money so you can see from 18 19 I started the culture of saving it was strange but my family my parents could not afford to send me to that to that school only that could my parents, I can't remember when last, I think from 14, I started buying my clothes. Um, although they, when I say buying my clothes, um, bend and select, as, as the music say. Yeah, I've started doing that because the new ones that my pairs were wearing, I, I can't wear them. They look too either ill fitting or fake to me. So I prefer to go buy the used <laughs> one, the, the used one that look authentic more, to more me. More quality and more, ones. Yeah. It has started as way back then, so I never had it easy for you that listener or viewer that is thinking that some things came easy. It has never been easy. It's just been about the grace of God and focus. All right. What's your impression about the African youth in general? The African youth, I, I would say that the African youth, if given the opportunity, the African youth is disadvantaged 
first and foremost. And what's end? And disadvantage, maybe I'm, I'm speaking for entrepreneurs. Um, till this stage, I, I'm still a youth building a business. Till this stage, someone was telling me yesterday, somebody in the industry, he was telling me, he mentioned the name of a bank that I can't mention, and said that he showed that if I want 50 million, the bank will give to me now that's the out business. That I shouldn't be having money business the way they hide. I told him that the highest we've ever accessed from any bank in Nigeria and the world is four million naira. He didn't believe it. The highest we've ever assessed as an overdraft, mm. not as a loan, is four million naira. Nigerian banks are not willing to see to look at potentials and grow and, and grow you. So, so you look at someone like me. If I was in Europe or America, first and foremost, I'm a citizen. Secondly, I've grown a business organically for the past eight years. You, you can see that this business has a history when it was registered. You can Google and check stories about it, how this person grew this business. It, uh, when I say organic, it's about making profit, providing it back to the business. Our contemporaries in China don't work like that. Our contemporaries in America don't work like that. It was about three years ago that the guys I was doing business with in Istanbul, they were telling me that what is this thing I keep talking about? Um, bank buying money from bank, this that, and that. As it, am I not a citizen that owns a business that they're just supposed to do LC letter of credit, and then the bank transfers the money on credit on my behalf, and, and I laughed at them. But you're talking about being disadvantaged, the African youth. That is one of the angles. In the second angle, it's in the area of politics. We can see what is happening. The old people have refused to leave power. There's a, there's a seat-tightism mentality. Okay, so how that, does that affect? Yeah, it makes it makes us disadvantaged. It affects us. You, you, um, when was Gowan, Muritala, Mohammed, or when were they all first head of state? I mean, one was 34 or so when he was head of state, either Muritala, Mohammed, or Gowan. And you look at, I don't want to, I don't want to mention names, but you know a lot of them, even those that were um, governors in the early 80s of regions and all, they are still in the Senate till date. I mean, how does that how does that make us advantage? Okay, as so youth? what would you rather uh, see take shape? I'll, I'll see a situation whereby more Nigerian youths would start thinking futuristic. They would start um, thinking about it's not just about them. It's not just about getting a particular SUV now or a particular Porsche car and you, I mean just gallivanting, running around everywhere. It's about building a country. That we can that 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 can make the international community respect the green passport when we present it outside. One of, one of some of the things that needs to be done is that young people should not. If the home is not conducive, as they would say. But when you go outside and you start carrying drugs, or you start doing four or nine, or you, you you even start in Italy, you start prostituting, or even in China and Dubai, it's crazy. It, it, it's some of the things that I would love people. I would love to see stop. Nigerian, you should say, let's stay back home because they, you say, for one Uche energy, you have ninety nine that has failed. But I would, I would, I differ. I differ to agree on that because for one Uche energy, you have ninety nine that were not patient. Okay. I hope that sinks home. Okay. So you call for more, more patience. Yeah, people need to be patient. Be ready to grow businesses. Be, be just think about the future, not start a business now. You look at an Uche Naji, you look at an Uche Naji, you feel that ah, he's wearing certain kind of clothes, he lives in a part of town, he drives a particular kind of car. So, why can't I? Is it not the same fashion we're doing? Why can't I be there in two years? God bless you if you have the funds, you can be there sooner than someone like me go there. But if you don't have the funds and you want to grow and you're passionate about it, wait it out. All right, so what's your word to younger entrepreneurs out there? Is this is the word I just said? Okay. They have to be focused, determined, and patient. All right. So, can you tell us some some of the projects you're working on at the minute? Okay. You know, I talked about the I talked about the long term one that we're starting officially this year, which is clothing people um, for free. Then immediate, um, I'm getting set to go for the PT Umo. That's that's a major project for the Ouch brand. The PT Umo is. Your number one is the number one um, fashion event for men and women in Florence, Italy. So I have to be there so that we can get the direction, look at the templates for the year on what fashion is going, the direction is going to take this year and um, some part of 2017. Um, 
and of course, if you other, I mean, you're talking about Priya, I'm also doing the Hong Kong Fashion Week and all, still doing this trip. Um, but there are a few things lined up. We're looking for an out. We are trying. We are looking for an out man. It's a, It's going to be like a reality. I, I'm, I don't. I don't know the brief they have for it. How it's going to be structured? If it's a reality show, or it's still part of CSR. Want to make a superstar? Want to make a model? Somebody that's out of like a face. Of yeah, like a face. Hundreds of young men that's going to apply will pick him and make him famous. It's one of the projects we are working on this year. Um, for me personally, I shared with my team a few days ago on how many outlets we are going to open this year, and they oh, screamed, and they and they, yeah, and they, and they screamed, and I mean, those are just some of the things that we're working on this year. And most importantly, to just be a better person. All right, and I wish you success in Thank that. you very much. It's been really nice talking to you. Same pleasure, really all mine. Pleasure, <laughs> all mine. Okay, so that's all we can take on the fashion and style segment. One personality is Bilari. I am to on my TV. King on the beat, King on the beat. And this is song I wrote for all of us out there, you know. If you got someone that you love, never let go. Skinny, skinny, skinny King. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Come on, come on. Hey, hey. Again, I only you, oh baby. I swear I only you. Again, I only you, oh baby. I swear I only you. Again, I only you, baby. I swear, I only you. Again, I only you, now only you, now only you. Again, I only you. I'm okay. I'm loving you. I'm loving you, baby. Girl, I'm thinking of you. Again, I only you. You always on my mind. Every day, I never find. Again, I only you. 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 I will treat you right, I take you to the places that you never been. You are Johnny, baby, you are Johnny. So holy, you are Johnny, baby, you are Johnny. It's only you are Johnny, baby, you are Johnny. It's only you are Johnny, baby, you are Johnny. It's only the way I feel for you is one of kind. You're loving, you got me going crazy. Baby, girl, I'm drunk in love. Baby, girl, I'm loving you until it's over. I know go play you, girl. I know go play you. Girl, I know go play you. Girl, I'm loving you. I'm loving you. Girl, I'm loving you. I'm loving you. What I need, baby, you what I need. Only you what I need, baby, you what I need. It's only. It's only you what I want, you what I need, you my desire, baby, you what I love. I thank you, dear mama, for the struggle. Now I'm living free, so you higher to this guy. I'm all get, girl, I'm loving you. So take I'm judging, make you not go drive me crazy. Yeah, I'm loving you, and we 
to be the mother of my children. Come up. You are that I need, baby. You are that I so holy. You are that I need, baby. You are that I it's only You are that I need, it's only baby. You are that I it's only You are that I need, it's only baby. You are that I it's only. Welcome to the entertainment segment of Personalities with Larry. I am Tony Rupomotini and I am pretty much excited about my guest today because he draws the limelight at the age of four. Recently attended the Britain's Got Talent is one of the one awards. He has 15 singles to his name. And the most amazing fact about my guest for today is he was born in the millennium, 2007 precisely. Yesterday was his birthday and he was just nine. Nice to have you here, Ozzy Bosco and his mom. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, ma'am. How do you feel? I feel so happy and, you know, excited. Good. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Um, I love singing, I love dancing, and I love entertaining people. Mm. Oh, very good. Oh, and I'm also a student too. Very good. That's cool. So tell me what you do. What do you do? Um, I love entertaining people, like I said, and I'm also a student too in school. Good. So can you tell me the kind of music that you do? Actually, I'm a hip hop artist which I did a gospel and it's titled You Rain. Good. So tell me, where do you get your inspiration from? From money? <laughs> no, I get my inspirations from God Almighty. And that's a very good thing. Now, Thank you, um, Who is your role model? My role model is Michael Jackson. My role model is God, Michael Jackson, and others. Okay, so yourself? <laughs> yes, I love me too. Alright, so why do you say yourself? I said myself because I believe in what I'm doing. Good. Uh, you recently participated in Britain's Got Talent in Manchester, uh, England. England. Yes, I took part in Britain's Got Talent and I wowed the judges with my performance and they gave me a standing ovation. Mm. Mm, very good. <laughs> I'm, I I'm, 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 I'm a witness. witness. <laughs> I was there. It was awesome. Okay. So, can you tell us some of the songs that you've done and people you featured? The songs I've done and people I featured are Superstar featuring Lamborghini, which was my first song, Sweet Mama featuring Flavor, Tinini featuring Olamide, Do Good featuring Sound Sultan, and my new return song, which is called Smile Again. Do you want to know the person I featured? Don't tell me. I featured God. The person who gave us talent and we and to do what we need to do. Mm. Very good. Okay, Thank so you. how do you balance uh, your musical career and then school life? Do you want to know the secret? Yeah, I'd love to know. The secret is I work hard and I take my music career very seriously. No jokes. Mm. Very serious. That's serious business. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's so time for everything. Good. Oh, it's time for everything. Interesting. Okay, so who do you want to work with now? Um, I'd love to work with the Peace Uncle P Square, Uncle Two Baba, <laughs> Uncle Don Jazzy, and. Auntie Yemi Alade. Mm, good choice. Mm. Mm, you know the best. Yes, he does. He has picked the best out of, mm -hmm. you know, the classy 
musicians out there. Now, what do you see yourself in the next five years? It's all in God's hands. I see myself on top of the game. Good. <laughs> I like you. You have a real eye. Now, okay, now let's take a little shift and go into a bit of education. Who's the president of Nigeria? The president of Nigeria is Muhammadu Buhari. Mm, well, what would you like to do for you? I expect him to support the music industry and support kid artists like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope he's watching. <laughs> okay, so what do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? Mm. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I love singing. I love dancing. I love drawing, shopping, mm. and shopping and spending money. <laughs> and also <laughs> eating my chicken. <laughs> ah, really good. It makes me hungry. That really makes really nice ones for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he really loves chicken. No jokes. Oh, good. He does. Yeah, you give him chicken healthy. now, you, you will see a changed person. <laughs> good, he looks well. He tells on him, he looks really good. Thank you. Alright, so what's Thank your you. uh, throughout slogan? My slogan. I'm the youngest African superstar. Keep watching out for me. Mm. Okay, so what advice do you have for young children out there who really look up to you and love you? Hello children, my advice is go to school, read your books, obey your parents, obey your teachers. That's how you become like me because education is the key to success and greatness too. Great. Okay. So, what message do you have um, for your numerous fans and supporters out there? Hello, my great supporters and fans who are supporting me in my career. I love you all. Ozzy Bosco will never let you down. I mean, OZB will never let you down. <laughs> May God bless you all. Amen. By the way, why he said that is because he just changed his name recently to OZB. OZB, not yeah. OZB. Okay. But they go together. Uh, okay, so why, why did he change your name? Something simpler, something that flows better. Okay. So, because people are not pronouncing my name that well. <laughs> now what um, what's the what's the name of your latest song making the waves at the minute? Um actually the name of my latest song is Smile Again, which I dedicated to the internally displaced children in the northern Nigeria. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank it's you for having us. <laughs> it's been a fantastic chat there with the amazing and wonder kid like the call in. Well, here's the part where we pull the curtains. I'm Tolu Omotini. Bye Fatty, fatty, beat, beat. Step by step, get up and shake it out. Side by side, we're going round and round. Don't worry, we're gonna be all right.
Nigeria needs more than power and good rule. Nigeria, Nigerians need to live like human beings. Nigeria will no longer be looked at as the giant with clay feet. No, we will be looked at as a true giant. We will move with that frame of a giant and of course do what is right and of course you know, be where Nigeria should be and uh, tell the international community that look, the giant has woken up. These are the things that you put together. Now, I told you about the aesthetics. Is that what people will eat? Now, plants are, I mean, boreholes uh, were dug for plants, but where people are living, they don't have water. Then, street lights were powered by generators. The places where people are living are in perpetual darkness. Didn't you see all this? We will require to have a kind of synchronic approach to this fight against corruption. And the impunity that we are talking about, if Mr. President is going to get it and if he's going to make a something about it, he must make sure that everybody, every functionary of government, have the same mindset with him. 